Good afternoon. You all are ready for the speech because I don't know how I can top up with the last performance, but I'm going to be me anyway, right? So today's topic is live intentionally. When asked a question, what is the biggest mistake that all of us make? The Buddha replied. The biggest mistakes that all of us make as a person is that we think we have time. Time is free, but it's priceless. You cannot own time, but you can use it. You cannot keep time, but you can use it. Right? Time is priceless. Once you've lost time, you can never, ever Get it back. So if you will, I need you to do a small exercise with me. Just note down what I will show you next. Over our lifespan, in general, all around the world, the data shows that humans can live up to 78 years. Right? Do you know what is the life expectancy of Cambodian? 70 right now. And like, you know, it's increased, right? So it's between 60 and 70. Let's assume they all live to 70, right? In my case, I live up to 100 years old, I hope. But this is Cambodian lifespan. But this is how we use it. We spent 23.8 years just to sleep on the bed. Period. Nothing else. We spent almost one third of our lifetime on the bed, doing nothing. Just sleep. Yet, 30% of the people are struggling to sleep well. And then, we spend 10.5 years to work. And yet, 30% of the people on this planet, 50% of the people on this planet, want to quit their job. And this is important for all of you because in a few years, in next years or so, you will all have to go and find a job that I hope you like or love. Because you spend 10.5 years of your lifetime to work, right? And then we spend nine years on this favorite thing, so-called social media and TV and all of that. This is one of the most impactful things that we all encounter as a human being in this generation especially. Because these are the things that embodied our values, what we believe, what we think. Today, you might think that having a beautiful partner is an ideal way of life as a man because you are exposed to TV and social media and you see your friends having a beautiful partner and all of that. Or some of you may think that driving a BMW to school looks really cool because you see somebody else driving a Rolls Royce or driving a uh, Mercedes to school. So these are the things that impact us so much and we spend nine years on it. And then we spend six years doing core, right? Cleaning, washing, um, many other things. If some of you may be lucky enough to be born in a very, very rich family, you might not need to do all of that. You might not need to clean up your own bed and all of that. But in general, we all spend six years just doing this course at home. Right? Some of your, uh, some, some, sometimes your mom tells you to clean up the stuff and all of that. So if you add up for your whole lifetime, assuming that you will live up to 78 years, you spend six years doing this. And then you spend four years eating and drinking, and hopefully with your boyfriend and your girlfriends and your loved ones. Because otherwise you will spend four years eating with somebody that you don't like, and sometimes, right, we are struggling when it's lunchtime, your friend asks, what do you want to eat today? And you say, ah, that is the hardest questions I need to answer. At least it happens to me. Right? So I would go by the floor and eating anything. And we spend 16 years in most of our cases in education, 12 years at school, at high schools and all of that, and four years at the college. So we spend also 2.5 years after graduation grooming, which is you need to volunteers and do internships and do things that, you know, you get underpaid because you need to be ready for professional career and, you know, for a good, a good paid job. 
And we spend 2.5 years doing some shopping. You know, sometimes to the mall and sometimes to the grocery stores. And 1.5 years in the child care. And 1.3 years commuting, right? Driving to schools, driving to work, driving to some places. That all add up to 1.3 years. Some of us might take longer because we live in Phnom Penh. The traffic is very, you know, not so pleasant. And sometimes we spend a very long time on, unnecessarily on the road. So, if you add up to all of that, the total is 81 point years. Just to do all of that that I just tell you. And we just said Cambodian life expectancy is 60 years old to 70 years old. Right? So if you are not careful enough, if you are not careful enough, you will die before living. You will die before living. Because who knows what will happen tomorrow. Can anyone promise me that he or she knows what will happen exactly tomorrow? No. We all don't know too, even our life. We don't even know that. So this is very important to understand that we all spend time to do all of this. I'm not saying 28 years on, on the bed is not good and you should not sleep anymore. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying sleep intentionally. I'm not saying eat and drink four years in our lifetime is bad. But if you eat with your boyfriend and your girlfriends, isn't it better than eating with strangers? Right? If you go to work to a job that you really love, like our, you know, three of the performers um, teams come in, if they come here and do what they love, isn't that better than doing the thing that they hate? Right? So these are important because we don't want our life to be dying before we start living. And that's why Buddha once said, it is not important how long we live. It is more important how we live. That's the most important part. And that, to me, fall into this circle, the quest that I call the golden circle. Why I call it the golden circle? If you are able to understand this fully, I think, in my opinion, your life will be more purposeful, and I think you have more control over your life. Why I say that? Most people in life, when we go to school, especially in grade one, our teachers ask us, what do you want to be? Right? Some people say, I want to be an engineer, and some people want to be a doctor, and some people want to be a security guard. Have you heard that? Because some kids at you know, the rural area never see a teacher in their whole life. Their father is a security guard, so the only thing he inspired to be is to be a security guard. All of us sometimes are more fortunate to see all of these superstars, so you aspire to be a superstar. Some of you, you know, see your um, professors, your teachers, then you want to be a professor. So all of this are somehow impacts what we think. So most of us think about what we want in life. Right? But don't forget that what we want in life might not be actually what we really want. Because we just said, we spend nine years on social media. Do you have control of what you want to see on social media? Almost not. Right now with the algorithms and all of this machine learning, you are exposed to many things that you don't want to even see. And you unconsciously consume all of these contents all the time. And then you get confused. You think, next year I want to be a top scorer at KMAT. Because not I really want it, but because I see my friends get as top scorers, and I want, to be look, I want to look cool as him or her. Right? If you actually want to become a top scorer because you think it's good for you, then it's good. But if you only want to get it because your friends get a top scorer, that's an issue. And that is the biggest issue that we all face in life today. Even in the professional careers as well, many of us think that we want this and that because we are pressured by our peers, our friends, our colleagues, and sometimes especially our family, right? Your mom would say, don't, see your, don't you see your, your neighbors? He now becomes a doctor. How in the world you go and sing, right? But they don't know what you actually love. They don't understand all of this.
crowd cheering to you, happy when you're performing, and they, you know, they smile because you speak so beautifully and you play so beautifully together. That is what I refer to by living intentionally. So, what is important, but it is not as important as the why. Most people think about what they want in life, and then they find out, right? Say, if you want to be an accountant, what do you do? You come to KMAT because it is one of the very best schools in Cambodia, right? So you will find ways to get there. If you want to be a singer, then you will find the opportunities to come up on stage and sing. The more you sing, the better you get, right? Um, the first year, the man says, um, to say sorry is on the you know, anxiety stage performance. I still do myself too, right? But the more we do, the more natural we become. So you will find how. So it is not that hard. Somebody knows what, you know, know how to get to where you want. I can assure you, if you want to be a, a very good professor, you can ask Pat. If you want to be a good leader or, you know, a, a, someone's very significant, you can ask Dr. Virya. So you can ask for this guidance. But, but, why do you want that? Is the most important question that you need to answer for yourself. I don't have to know it. Your mom doesn't have to know it. Your father doesn't have to even understand about it. You must understand why you want what you want, why you do what you do, why you act the way you act. Because it is a factor that determines the quality of your life. We just said we only have 78 years lifespan, Cambodian is shorter on average, and we don't have control over the future, right? Because life is extremely short and unpredictable and fragile. Have you known someone or a friend who passed away by accidents or disease at the age of 20? Right? Some of us know somebody who died at 20 years old. And you think you will live up to 78. So you take things for granted. You think, I don't want to do this because I think I have 20 more years to live or 50 more years to live. But don't you forget that maybe somebody who is your age just passed. I'm not scaring all of us because, let's face it, don't scare living your life. Whatever you want to do, do it. But I just want to put things in perspective that there is nothing guaranteed in the next minute this building can collapse. And I will, I will die happy because I got a chance to speak to all of you. I come here intentionally. I know that it is worth my time on Sunday afternoon to speak to all of you. Maybe my words can change someone's life. So I'm intentionally coming here. Are you actually coming here intentionally? That's the question you need to ask yourself. So next time, if you go somewhere unintentionally and you start to realize, oh, I come here because my friend influenced me, then you stop going. Right? If you sing because your friend sings, then you have to reevaluate what you do. But if you love singing so much and you love playing guitars and piano so much, then continue to do it because this is important. So I want to make sure and I hope that each and every one of us find that meaning. And that's why, to me, you need to live wisely and you need to live intentionally. Why do I say live wisely? I have a favorite quote. I say it. It is easy to be smart, but it is hard to be wise. Right? You can be a smart student. You can get A grade or B grade or whatever grade you want to get. If you put a little more effort and you pay a little more attention to your work, you can be smart. But how to live wisely is hard. And I have no formula for that, I'm sorry. You need to learn as much as you can in so many ways. You know, Coming to seminars, coming to uh, this type of things, and even you know, put things in perspective. Like I was sitting down and looking at all of these beautiful people's performings, and I asked myself, Oh my goodness, when I was at their age, did I have that braveness and courage to do what they're just doing? You know, because we were shy when we were younger. 
And when we see somebody is doing all of this dancing move and all of that, we kind of giggle and you know you look stupid or all of that. But then we aspire to be them. So when I was sitting down and listening to music and their performance, I am learning something. So this is one way to live wisely. And then you have all of these amazing people asking for their advice, starting to do things that you love and you fall and you rise again and you make mistakes and you fall and you rise again. This is the process because there is no other ways around. I wish I have a, you know, a special medicine for you to swallow and you become wise, but there is none of that happening in this world. It's only through experiences, through perspective, through observation, through learning. These are the things that you can do to live wisely and to live intentionally. So with that, I hope you all remember that we all have probably 70, 80 years to live, and I wish you live for 200 years like I will. But, but spend every second after I finish my talk today intentionally. Live intentionally, act intentionally, do whatever you love to do intentionally, and by doing that, you need to answer your why. So thank you all so much for listening to me, and I wish you all the best.